Welcome to another edition of Danny Brown Talks Phoenix. I am your host, Danny Brown. As you can see, I am operating from my home office. We are on week two or three of the uh, stay-at-home order here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, in, you know, we're amidst the uh, COVID-19 crisis, so we're just kind of pivoting. And I have uh, requested that Mike Leto of Little Leto Catering join us today. So we'll introduce him in a minute. But for those of you who are new to our podcast and our show, my name is Danny Brown. I'm a realtor here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm also the CEO of Myriad Real Estate Group. Uh, my company sponsors this podcast. And uh, you know, if you like it, uh, I would love for you to subscribe, share, comment, and give us your feedback. I want to welcome Mike Leto of Lil Leto Catering. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Why don't you, for our listeners and our audience, give us a little bit of background on yourself and Lil Leto Catering and what you were doing, you know, BCV before coronavirus. <laughs> I like you have a little abbreviation now. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It'll probably be forever used in history, BCB. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I've been operating a uh, catering company. Started off as a small catering company, mainly private dinners. We do a lot of bachelorette parties. And that started, I went full-time with it in the year of 2015, so of September. So going this upcoming September will be my fifth year doing catering. Um, forgive the background noises. It's my dog drinking from its bowl. <laughs> That's okay. Um, a lot of people are, 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 I mean, everybody's operating at home. So there's yeah. crying babies yeah. in the background, other people on Zoom calls, whatever. Yeah. If when we're our interviews over, if you want to interview him, he's, I can come <laughs> in for you. Um, but yeah, so operating for about five years. So it's grown from small dinners. I'm doing a lot, I'm doing a lot more weddings now, larger event parties. We also do corporate corporate catering, like breakfast luncheons. Um, I do pizza parties. I do cooking classes now. So I have a wide variety of options that people can choose from now. In the beginning, it was strictly like Italian and French food, but now the menus evolved to Greek, Mediterranean, uh, Mexican, Spanish, whatever any menu you can think of, um, I'll create for you. So, yeah, uh, before Corona hit. Uh, I was gearing up for a really busy uh, springtime, as in most small businesses in Arizona are. The weather's incredible, and there's a lot of people visiting in town for spring training, Bear Jackson, all these events leading spring break. So uh, overnight, business just disappeared. Um, I lost six months' worth of events. So beginning of March, I actually was coming back in town from Texas. It was before the quarantine really was really strict. I was visiting my brother in uh, Austin, Texas, or Fort, Fort Hood. He's in the military. And the whole time I was taking emails from people with events in the next couple of weeks that were kind of canceling. And then it just kept getting pushed further and further out until the point where I was getting events in July were canceled. So um, overnight, I had to think, what am I going to do? And... Um, I, uh, from that, I just put a post online trying to help kind of similar to what you're doing, helping small businesses. Uh, I put it kind of an insightful message post and I didn't want people to worry about me or get pity from it. It was just trying, trying to give them an idea of what we're going through as far as what we expect to make as gross for income in these next three or four months. It's basically 40 to 50% of our income come in these great weather months and then it dies off for summer and then late falls when it comes back around again. So a lot of small places, small restaurants were banking on this to pay their bills for next year or late this year. And it just, so I put that post out there and I got some good feedback and one of them was a good buddy of mine told me to pivot and start doing drop-offs. And I was like, okay, I'll roll with that idea. And then uh, what I was rudely awakened again when I went to the store and they told you told me that I can only buy X amount of each item. So I was like, OK, I have to figure out how can I put a meal together where I'm still giving people protein because protein is what they put a lot of limits on was 
steak, chicken, beef, pork, whatever. So I, what you've experienced was the fajita box. I had to figure out how to give protein and kind of divvy it up so I can still give a good amount of each, but I have to split it. I couldn't just give all pork or all chicken. So from that, I've just kind of uh, kept that ball moving and people that have continuously ordered, I've just uh, changed menus for them. We'll do an Italian night. We'll do a surf and turf night, things like that. If they want to eat, I'll make food. And then I'm also doing some donated dinners at this moment for nurses and families in need. So that's incredible. So you kind of, uh, I mean, you, you've been in business now for five years and mm -hmm. five years and things were on, you know, an uphill trajectory, like many of us, you know, we're in this, this bull market of an economy for the last 12 years. And, you know, like a lot of us, myself included, the springtime in Phoenix is kind of your season. Yep. You hit the summer months, which we're rapidly approaching, and everything kind of is put on pause until you get into the fall. And, you know, what I'm fearful of for, for many small businesses is that we get through the summer months and we get into the fall and we still don't see that that uptick. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we get into those cooler weather months. So being able to pivot as quickly as you did, um, I think it shows kind of a true testament to your your business and your foresight in, in how to kind of try to make ends meet during this, this crisis. And, you know, uh, seeing all your posts on social media has been really fantastic. And I, and I would say anyone out there that's hurt in this time, this is not a time to be prideful. It's a time to be vulnerable. So if you got to share what's going on with you so people can get an understanding and reach out and help, because if they're not, if they're not enlightened or you don't give them insight about what's going on, they don't really know where to help. You have to bring it to people's attention. I don't fault people for that, but like you, you this is something that's necessary. And if, again, if, say that I pivoted and this doesn't work, I'm okay with this point. I have to make ends meet. You got to go take a job of maybe doing something you didn't expect to be doing, but that's what you have to do to make ends meet. I, I mean, I was brought up, my father's an immigrant. He was a very poor, came from a very poor family. And you really didn't have a choice growing up. It's just you went to work because you wanted to eat and fe help feed the family. He started working at 12 years old. So that was always kind of instilled with me at a young age. You just work hard and you do what you have to do. So it's just if you can get a little money in your pocket, and eat, get food for that day, then worry about the next day when it comes and just take it a day by day. And that's in this situation, that's all you can do is take it day by day because you really don't know. Uh, what's going to transpire? I mean, on a couple of my cancellations, people are asking if they could rebook me for next year. I go, honestly, I don't know where I'll be next year, so I can't commit to a situation. I, I don't know if I'll be cooking or I'll be catering or I might be working a desk job. I, I don't know. So all I know is this virus is, is scary because, as again, in the fall, if we don't find a vaccine for this and it's cyclical, think the magnitude. Sporting events are done, concerts are done, movie theaters are done. Like it, it can get really scary real quickly. And that's pray, pray and hope, uh, put it in the universe or pray to God, however you want to do it, that um, a vaccine comes and they can get a hold on this and we get a better understanding because, like I said, it can get pretty crazy. Yeah, it so. can. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. And I think that that's kind of the biggest problem with all of this is that nobody really knows what to do, what to expect, how to plan for it. We're all just kind of making it up as we go. And, you know, so is so is the news. Everybody can kind of speculate, but nobody really knows. This is all kind right. of unprecedented. And, you know, I've been relating it to war, that we are in a wartime economy. We are you know, we're not fighting another country, but we're fighting a bug and there's casualties. And um, this is definitely a wartime economy. And we, you know, we all have to be kind of prepared for that. I think that's very well said. It just, yes, you hit the nail on the head. So let's let's get into kind of the, the creative things that you're doing as a small business owner. 
Um, you know, I, I noticed right away the posts that you were putting out changed um, and the offerings that you were you were putting out there. So some of the interesting things that you've been doing are, you know, Facebook and Instagram lives where you're cooking food and showing people how to create meals in their own home. I, I think that that's really fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, I would suggest to anybody in the small business that come back stronger. So start showing the world what you're worth and what you're capable of if you haven't done that in the past. And I, I will be the first to admit that I uh, didn't, I had someone taking care of my social media and she's doing a great job, but I could still be doing more posting myself more on the stories and sharing recipes and showing my value. And that, that has really worked from a marketing standpoint and advertising and just putting out content to help others. It, we know everyone has a bunch of flour at, and yeast at home now because there's nothing on the shelf for days. Um, so teach them how to make bread because they might need to know how to make that eventually. So they just right now they're sitting on it and they're still be able to get stuff at stores, but it might come to a pressing point where they actually need to know how to use this stuff. So I'm just trying to do things that make sense. So I have some stuff planned out for the next couple of weeks too that will uh, implement like buying things in bulk and how to cook that stuff, whether it's pork shoulder or maybe a brisket, stuff that would last several days. That's kind of on the cheaper side when you buy it in bulk. Um, yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, just trying to be, uh, stay creative and then start showing what I know and uh, letting people learn from that. And that's a great way to bring the community together when they feel a part of something. So yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, small businesses, this is an opportunity um, to to make an impact. And rather than, you know, bury your head in the sand and look at this as a terrible thing that your um, business is going to go under because of this, using it as a chance to really do a deep dive into your business and figure out, you know, what things you enjoy and what kind of content and what kind of business you actually want to be and you're providing a ton of value and i think you know i think these events happen and it's a reshuffling of the deck yeah uh, you know you've got these businesses at the top that have done things for a certain you know <clears throat> a certain way for a long time and now all of a sudden it's different right and the small nimble companies who change what they're doing rapidly that can make a land grab and, you know, the, the stuff that you're putting out there, the content, it's free. You know, people yeah. can watch this and, and, and right. do these things for free. Uh, and I think it's, it's wonderful because everybody is stuck at home. And most people are now making dinners <laughs> as a family. And you right. putting out how-to videos on right. using the things that you have in your home on how to cook is really, uh, I think it's really special. Yeah, and I appreciate that, man. I, I'm reading this interesting book. It's called Facing Your Giants. Um, and it was talking about actually two things. My dad sent me an inspirational video today about this uh, man that was speaking at a college graduation. Um, he had four degrees himself, and he was talking about the smartest man or wisest man he ever known. In tough times like this, you, you just need to keep standing. Just stand. Stay on top of things. Put one foot in front of the other. And just keep grinding it out and figuring it out. Because um, right now we're all swimming in the fog right now. And the island could be right in front of us, but we can't see it. So we might give up early. It's just keep swimming. Keep going. You'll get through this and just keep. Humans are wonderful at troubleshooting. That's why you and I are talking on the phone right now through video. Uh, our ability to figure things out rapidly. Because necessity is the mother of invention, right? Sure. So um, just don't, like you said, don't break down. Don't put your hand, head in the sand and just get creative. Um, because that's, I mean, this might be a perfect opportunity for, for you to slow everything down and just reassess your life and what really matters. I mean, a lot of people are, are going to understand when coming out of this that maybe Americans especially, like maybe how we are approaching life wasn't the best where it was just go, 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 go all the time. Um, 
and just purchase, 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 purchase and throw stuff out. Think how much food we waste typically is about 50% of it. Now people are going to be holding on to a lot more food because you don't know when your next meal is or if you can afford just to throw something like that out, out, just, just not even thinking about it. So, yeah, I appreciate your words. And so, but yeah, I just got to gotta keep going. Can you speak a little bit to, you know, what you're doing now to kind of bring in income? I think the free stuff is fantastic from a marketing standpoint and a branding standpoint, but you know, you still got to pay the bills sure. and so you, you know, you're making food for people and, and delivering it to them. What, yeah. uh, what does that process look like and how has the, the response been? Uh, response is good. So I have a lot of, there's still fit families that want, they have that eating out experience, but obviously they can't eat out. They just want to eat great food. So they're supporting me in that. So I have weekly, I have two to three drop-offs. So maybe it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, where I'm doing meals. I was only originally doing it for six. I was doing six boxes, I guess you could call it. And it was for upwards of 24 people. And I've gotten good traction for that. So now that I have a little bit of income, coming in myself. I'm trying to help others that are struggling at this point too and invite them into the situation and say, instead of just doing the six drop-offs, how about we try doing another four or five so you can make a little bit of money off of this. So as long as I'm making a little bit, again, feeding myself for the day, maybe putting a tad bit of money aside um, for other bills, let me see how I can help others. And I think that's where we need to be right now is, okay, if I can get my situation good, how can I help someone else in this situation um, get good from it? Um, yeah, it's, it's really difficult. I would even mention on a different note, I made a post on my uh, catering page on Instagram that if you like a business, if you like what a business is doing, don't like their post, share it. And you, you, you've been wonderful at that because that shows the company you like them and it shows other people you like them. Heck, share it and write a little review of like, hey, this is why I like this company. They're known for this, this, and this. You should definitely go see them because if you're just liking the page, it's not going to help them. And so if you want to show somebody you really care about them, share the post, Let, spotlight them and say, this is what you should get from them. So, um, cause that's how you really help people. And maybe you're not gonna buy something from them personally cause you can't at that point, but someone else might. And that's what it is. That's the ch chain of events is just putting it out there so other people can see the value that you align with, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really fine line to walk right now. You know, you see all the posts that people are coming out with and they're encouraging you support your local restaurant support your local business and you want to but it's hard when you're seeing you know the number that just came out yesterday was 17 million people have now filed for unemployment and right. it's like that makes you that makes me terrified you know that right. makes you want to tighten up and keep your money to yourself right but you do have to eat and what we, you know, my wife and I, we always have a planned date night every week, every Saturday night. That's our night for a date night. And right now we're not able to go out to a restaurant like we normally would. Right. So while, yes, we are tightening up and we're cutting our budget and, you know, tr making sure that we're living below our means, we're being very intentional with what restaurants and what where we're going um, and who we want to support and right. still keeping to that that date night if you will but we're just right. doing it at home so you know we we ordered food from you and it was amazing um i, I actually have to say out of all the food you know we've ordered from we try to do mom and pop local restaurants um yours by far was the best um, Thank you, and we really enjoyed it. So, when you're when you're doing this and you're planning these meals, are people able to order something specific for you, or are you making a bolt like this week? We're making like we did fajitas. So, did you make? Did you just put it out in the world that this week we're making fajitas? If anybody wants fajitas, let me know. You know, next yeah. week we're doing. I don't know. Yeah. So going forward, just again, trying to see how this evolves. 
day by day. Um, we're going to have a set schedule. So I'm going to make sure that people know that ahead of time. Um, I'll be putting on social media as Instagram and Facebook and then sending out a mailer again through my email. And I, I want to have a set schedule as far as Monday, Wednesday, Friday. These are the items we're doing. But the moment, like, some of the stuff I was putting out, after, like, the first couple times it was put out, it wasn't uh, being picked up as much. So I had to go back to the people that I already had ordered and say, hey, what type of menu are you looking for? Oh, you want an Italian theme? Okay, I'll do Italian theme, and I could get four or five people that day. So that's how I kind of was going about it going forward. But, yeah, so I will have a set schedule. Back to what I was saying, I was trying to bring other people um, on board with me. I ran into an old server of mine, an old, old server friend and colleague of mine um, this past week, and I asked her what she was doing. She was serving at a restaurant, and her restaurant just completely closed down. They didn't even do any to-go stuff. So I said, okay, well, let's see how if I can write you into what I'm doing, and maybe you can help doing drop-off and deliveries because – Myself, I'm working harder now to make less, and it's and it's it's okay. But like, I mean, I'll cook for four, five, six hours straight, and then I have to go drive and do drop-offs for two to three hours. So it's a long day. So by the end of it, I'm I'm tired. So if I can get someone else to take half those drop-offs and maybe twenty-five percent of the work, then I can push it a little further, and again help others that are struggling right now to make ends meet. So I'm trying to help others. And yeah, just be, I think what you and Alyssa are doing is great. Just finding a local mom and pop places and going to them. I also want to mention, excuse me, when you're ordering from these places, understand that they're experiencing something in life that they've never experienced before as far as restaurants and don't get upset. Just be very patient. They're trying to troubleshoot a situation that they never thought they would have to plan for. So if like, if your order takes a little bit longer than it's supposed to, just be thankful that you're eating that day and you can afford that. There's no point right now to be negative. Um, Cause again, uh, people don't know how to handle the situation. They're learning stuff on the fly. It's basically like, if I told you, Danny, by this Sunday, I want you to learn be fluent in French, get on it. And you're like, uh, okay, <laughs> like where do I start? Like I'm learning a new language at this point. I've had to go about things. All right, I guess I can start here. And, and you're going to screw up along the way. And that's perfectly normal. Like anyone that speaks, I speak a couple different languages. Like when you first start learning that, you sound silly and you don't pronounce words right and you forget words. And it's easy to get your mind confused. And then you get all worked up, especially in tense moments. This is when the body can shut down. But that's what I'm saying. Just stand and keep going and you'll figure it out. So. Yeah, I think that that I think what you touched on is really crucial. And I have noticed, you know, I, I do believe that everyone is cutting each other a little bit more slack than what we had in the past. We're all going through this incredibly unique time in history yeah. and we're all fighting our own battles. And so I think that that's right. a great point is to cut these places some slack. Um, and, and I think, you know, you mentioned before that don't just like their posts. I think this is an opportunity, you know, if you do go to a place to, you know, tag yourself, do a yes. selfie, you yes. know, give a shout out. Uh, if you're a big fan of them, give them a five star review on, you know, right. Yelp, whatever platform. Um, because. And that, and that, I'm going to pause you there. Like over the years, I've done business with people and they've said, they'll say they will write a review and they don't end up doing it. And at this time is the perfect time because the amount of time people are on their phones and on social media is at an all time high right now. If they're right. on it before, they're definitely on it a hundred times more. So like it takes you two minutes and that can save somebody's company. And it's weird to say that, but just, it takes just a couple of reviews to spotlight this place again. And maybe you write a review for somebody, which you've done, which you're awesome about. And someone sees that you wrote a review. They go, oh, what's this place about? Oh, they do this, this, and this. Oh, you know what? We should get something from that. And it only takes two minutes yeah. to do something like that. It's so simple. And just it's worth more than you will ever understand if you don't own your own business. Like what that means to the small business owner is just 
hey, you took the time to highlight me. And I had a great one come in yesterday, a great review from, I can't even count how many cancellations there have been. But a, a girl I had suggested to her, she was appreciative of me refunding her money back. And I was like, you know what? If you get a chance, write a review. I've mentioned to people before, just saying about our experience. And she actually went and did it. And it made my day going, cool. She took the time for myself to spotlight our interaction, even though the contract that we originally wrote didn't pan out. and It was nothing either of us did. But she took the moment to be selfless and not be selfish, being like, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. No, you have a moment. Do it now. Show people you care for them and that you care for their product and highlight it so they can continue going. Because if not, like if all, say 50% of the restaurants close, like that's going to take forever to rebound from. So we, it's important now that we keep them going and going. Because it's it's not our economy is going to crash completely. Yeah, you know, and it's really sad. You and I both grew up here, and Phoenix was never a food destination, and it finally is. Yeah, and I am terrified that we're going to fall back into where the restaurant options, you know, and and I'm not Red Robin, not Chili's, Applebee's. Yeah, yeah, which I I just desperately don't want. We 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 come <laughs> so far right, so far in having these just fantastic choices yeah. for meals yeah. and i i just pray that that doesn't all just disappear in a flash yeah uh, but i wanted to change gears a little bit okay and, you know you uh you and i've chatted and and you have had the opportunity to live abroad several times and um the reason that i think that that is kind of uh really important right now is that you you were forced to live on a very small budget yeah. And so a lot of people right now, you know, again, 17 million have filed for unemployment and they're having to look at their budgets and kind of get focused on what is really important. So I was wondering if I could ask you some questions about, you know, when you were living abroad, how did you manage living on such a small tight budget and what did that look like? So that goes into burning to stretch an item, I guess would be the best way to say it. So I actually saw this, the one place I worked in Sicily, I noticed that all the vegetable, traditionally the vegetable discards that you and I would have at our house. So the ends of carrots or the ends of zucchini uh, or the ends of celery, that would all be thrown into a pot to make a stock, a vegetable stock out of it. So instead of throwing that out, you can eventually make a soup out of that or add that as flavor. I thought that was a pretty cool idea to how to say you see what i'm saying so anything that you have the leftover stem of the bell pepper is going to have some flavor to it just boil it down so you can add it to dishes later um using so if you buy a whole rotisserie chicken if you cut out that middle part which i can show people how to do it with shears maybe that's a good video save that again you can make a stock or a soup out of that that's that's stretching the item as far as possible learning how to make bread from scratch if you don't use the bread that day, turn it into breadcrumbs. So you can maybe make meatloaf or meatballs later. If you, because ground beef, you can buy it in better bulk and it's typically cheaper than a steak. So yeah, there are many ways you can stretch items. Um, and if people want to reach out and ask, say, hey, I have this, because it's hard to come up with a hundred different ways at this moment, but there's certainly ways to, again, stretch things out and how to make things go further um, than you traditionally would have ever thought um, needed to be. So yeah, if people reach out and say, hey, I have this leftover vegetable, what can I do with this? Okay, well maybe turn it into some type of puree and put it on type and use it as a sauce, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah, no, I had to learn just to be appreciative of the food that's brought to me and uh, I was allowed to purchase. And don't just be mindful again about what can I, Thankful for the situation, mindful of like, all right, how can I turn this into something else? Because um, that's like something our ancestors did for many, many years. And back to, again, my father's family immediately, my grandmother, my dad's mom had to stretch things out. So, well, they were uh, children of the, you know, the Great Depression. Yeah. And my grandparents were exactly the same in that yeah. nothing went to waste. You know, they utilized everything 
even into, you know, I remember as a, being a kid and, and he's, even as an adult, they never let anything go to waste. And, that, you know, and be one thing, even, even if you don't want to make the stocks, let's say, save all your vegetable and fruit discards. Maybe you want to eventually do a garden, start composting. This would be the best time to do that. You can get paper bags to the stores still. You can put all the items into that because the paper bag can eventually break down. You need a balance between those items anyways, which you can find online. All your leftover coffee grounds go into that compost. So if something that eventually you might need to do is garden, you might need to grow your own stuff because that might yeah. be cheaper. So um, like squash is really easy to grow. And if you buy one squash at the store, save the seeds, like if it's organic, it will grow again. You can literally throw that in. I I grew squash last year in my garden and I didn't even plant the seeds. Not me personally. They were just in the compost and it grew. So these are ways you can save or plan for, hey, worst case scenario, what if this happens? Anyway, so yeah, no, again, if people have questions after this and they want to know more ideas, and that's a great question you propose. And I think it would be very helpful in the long run if people just know how they can turn one situation to three, four, five, six different situations. That's yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in all crises, there is some good that comes out of it. And, I, and I'm hopeful that, that there is good that comes out of this one. You know, and here's another thing, like, this sounds foolish, but if you get to the point where you're really struggling as far as money goes, we're still showering. Maybe shower every other day. That would save them water. Bill. But when you go turn on the water, you're waiting for it to heat up, put your pasta pot underneath that. Don't waste that water. That's the same, that's the same water that's coming out of your sink. Let's be honest. And like, if you have to cut means, you got to cut it there somewhere. So just save that water and that can be the next pot for when you're boiling pasta. Um, so yeah. Anyway, sorry, random thought, but yeah. you know, it's totally fine. Totally fine. You know, that's a good segue into kind of wrapping this up. Uh, if people do have questions, I know I, I see your t-shirt that you got on. Yeah. You're representing. I like it. I like yeah. the product placement. Um, yeah. if anybody wants to reach out to you, if they want to follow you on social media, all the interesting yeah. things that you're doing, or they just have specific questions on how they can stretch their food budget. How do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can, well, the number's here, uh, uh, 602-705-3331. That's my cell phone. Or you can find me on, um, Instagram, little little catering, L I L L E T O catering. It's all one word. Um, or you can search for that on Facebook as well. Okay. So yeah, they can reach out. Don't please don't be afraid to reach out. I would love to help in any way possible. And if I, if you come to me and you need help, making money all let's figure it out together so um you it's great talking to you and even our buddy skylar irvine i always love interacting with you guys because you guys create ideas and you help keep momentum going stuff that i would never look at but you have you can't be afraid don't have a fixed mindset right now have a growth mindset don't be afraid to ask a question again get vulnerable tell people what's going on and say hey how do i figure this out and don't be afraid of that because that's the best way to grow and get a better understanding. So Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that some of the biggest companies that are in existence today were started in recessions and were started yes. during really yep. hard, difficult times. And so yes. this, again, you can either shut down and be afraid and terrified or you can be, you know, what has made America so great and yeah. be positive and fight yeah. and create and just pivot. And, you know, it really comes up. It's all up to you. Yeah. And if we all lean on each other, none of us will fall. So, I mean, we have to at this time lean on one another. It's just really very, very important. Put politics aside. We can argue about that later. <laughs> um, so just like find the good in the day. And be, again, appreciative of what's going on. And just take time to reach out to somebody. If you know somebody. And that's a wonderful thing that I've, I've seen and I feel blessed about is that I, I didn't know my impact on people until this happened. To I had a lot of people get choked up a little bit. A lot of that's people good. reached out. And it meant a lot. It really did. So um, it might, again, it's, financially it's not rewarding, but spiritually 
And if I died today, I know at least I accomplished something. I treated people right. So reach out to somebody. Really, it means it goes very, very far. So it does. It does. You know, we're we're in this age of text messaging and you know email and technology. And you know, one of the good things that I hope comes out of this is kind of bringing us together on a human to human level. Yep. You know, I I'm guilty of it. I've had more face-to-face -face interaction with my friends around the country because of this yeah. than, I had, than, I, than I had prior to it. And right. it's been all through Zoom and I feel closer to them now than I have in years. And right. it's because this has been a good reminder of, of what's important in life. And you touched on it earlier that it's okay to be vulnerable. You yeah. know, I, I did a Zoom call with my friends and that I hadn't seen in a while and they knew that I was in a bad place. You know, I had I had cracked. I had broke down and I I cried to my wife and I was just mentally in a really bad spot. And, you know, having those conversations, being vulnerable, that my wife, my friends kind of helped pull me out of it. And so it's don't just send a text, pick up the phone, have a conversation, set up a FaceTime. This right. is a this is a this is a time in history where we can either fall apart or we can come together and show that American spirit that our previous generations have shown. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you, yeah, you're absolutely right. Just and that's where support goes a long way. So I just that's what I would highly suggest to people: just su support one another, and we'll all get through this. We'll be all right, but it's going to take a minute. So yeah, for sure. Well, Mike, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to join me. I love what you're doing. Your food is fantastic. I can you know, personally attest to it. Uh, I've been to many weddings, many events where Mike has uh, catered, uh, You know, had his food uh, delivered to my house a couple weekends ago. We're going to be ordering more food from you soon. Um, so you, know, you are a master of your craft, and you've got a good heart. 